Here are the Netherlands in satellite view. You can see that there is a considerable amount of water within the parameters of the country. Most prominently Lake IJsselmeer, which is a former North Sea Bay, and Zeeland, which is a province that consists of islands and peninsulas. The entire west of the country is the delta of the river Rhine. In total, 18% of the surface area of the country is water, and this figure excludes the sea. The west of the country was a big swamp, pretty much looking like this, before the Dutch started to drain and cultivate it. They did this by building dikes and developing pumping techniques, starting out with windmills. But even then, water was everywhere. In fact, the western parts of the country always consisted of more water than dry land. Today, 26% of the country still lies below sea level, shown here in blue. The lowest inhabited place lies within the city of Rotterdam, at minus 6.76 meters. If all dikes and dams were opened, 60% of the Netherlands would be regularly underwater. More than 9 million people live in these areas. That's more than half of the entire Dutch population. In Amsterdam, the soggy ground is often described as solid water. It consists of layers of sand, peat and clay. The first load-bearing layer lies at a depth of 10 meters. This is the layer on which the piles under the famous canal houses rest. Today, all buildings are founded on concrete piles on a sand layer 22 meters underground. Parts of the city are several meters below sea level. Currently, this does not pose a direct threat, because the Netherlands are considered safe from flooding. Amsterdam is protected from the sea by an intricate system of dike rings and locks. In the past, however, there were several storm surges. The St. Elizabeth Flood from 1421, St. Peter's Flood from 1651, Zuider Zee Flood from 1916, and the last and worst one, the North Sea Flood from 1953. Their effects went so far as to partly reshape the coastline of the country and, maybe even more importantly, they influenced the mentality of the Dutch people. As a reaction to the floods, various dike reinforcement projects were undertaken. There have also been experiments with new coastal protection techniques, such as the sand engine, a man-made sand peninsula which gradually feeds the surrounding beaches and prevents erosion. But climate change is a fact and will affect the Netherlands sooner or later. According to the latest prognosis, the sea level will rise by 82 centimeters within the next century. But water does not only come from the sea in the Netherlands. It comes from all directions. From the ground, where the salt water is increasingly pushing through the polders, from the rivers, but also from the skies. Precipitation has increased by 25% since 1910 and the number of days with strong rain has increased by 85%. That's why the Dutch have started reconsidering their approach to water management. The ambition is to remain the safest delta in the world and to remain world leader in water management. 1.1 billion euros per year are invested in the so-called Delta Funds, the governmental water management program. But more and more experts propose we start living with the water instead of fighting against it. This includes creating more floodplains next to the rivers, flooding polders and reclaimed land, and growing different types of crops. And this is where houseboats come into play.